Good evening everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This is 3rd May 2015 and here we are going to speak about one of the important topics in technical analysis which is known as MSCD. Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. While like my earlier videos I talked a lot about foreign exchange, talked about fundamental and emotional behavior, business valuation and other. Today I am going to speak about one of the important topics of technical analysis which is MSCD. Well from this side I am Rahul Magan working as a corporate treasurer. And at the same time, I am running my foreign exchange, foreign exchange academies, which is Foreign Exchange Public Thinkers on LinkedIn, WhatsApp, and YouTube. I am also a faculty member for various organizations at Asia Pacific member at Asia Pacific level, and also acting as a virtual treasurer for various companies in Asia, predominantly in Singapore. Well, today, reiterating the fact that I am going to speak about a topic which is moving average convergence and divergence. Now, what do you mean by that? Now, in RSI, we heard about a topic. We heard about two stuff. When we talked about relative strength index, we talked about what do you mean by overbought and what do you mean by oversold. Now both overfault and oversold could have fundamental and could have emotional. We are living in 2015 when majority of the stuff is emotional, they are not fundamental in nature. Now but what MSD talked about? This so-called RSI and others, they based upon a simple concept which is known as moving average. Now moving average give equal weight to each and every term. Example, if you're calculating the moving average of 10 numbers, they would give the equal weight to all 10 numbers. But if you calculate the moving average of say 15, if you calculate the exponential moving average, then the exponential moving average will give more weight to the recent number and less weight to the, ex less weight to the old numbers. So MACD speaks about exponential moving average, not simple moving average. Now, please be understand, please be no, please note the fact that exponential moving average have their own pros and cons. Example, the weight is a factor, which is one pros and cons. Example, simple interest is also a pro. Example, the trimmed mean. Sometimes in MACD people calculate the trimmed mean. Sometimes they don't calculate the trimmed mean. Well, trimmed mean is an individual concept. But here what we are speaking is without trend mean. Trend mean is again you need to take into consideration. Now these stuff are statisticians should very well able to understand before using this technique called MSCD. Whether he want to use MSCD with a trend mean or whether he want to use MSCD without trend mean. Here I am going to show you without trend mean. Now MSCD would have two stuff. One which is known as MSCD line and second is known as signal line. Now MACD line is based upon 12 day exponential moving average minus 26 day exponential moving average. Now please be noted that as a corporate treasurer I am telling you 12 minus 26 because this you will find in the books. But please be noted that books may or might not correct because you are in 2015 when the volatility is, is at extreme pace. So there can be 100% probability that you may have you may have 12 and 26 but they might not hold true for any asset for every asset class which you are holding. Asset class f is something which you can buy and sell for an exchange, interest rate, commodity, each these commodity, gold, silver, platinum, these all are the asset classes. So this may or might not hold true for all asset class. Second effort to a signal line which effectively means 9 day exponential moving average. Now what do you mean by MACD? MACD means your so called MACD line minus so called signal line. I am simplistically referring 12 minus 26 minus 9. Now, this MACD greater than 0, it means you buy, and this MACD less than 0, which means you sell. But please be note that this may or might not hold true. Again, like my earlier videos, we spoke about what do you mean by stop loss? What do you mean by trailing stop loss? How can you adjust stop loss and trailing, trailing stop loss with your so-called uh, overbought and oversold signal? That one need to understand. Secondly, as a property trader or as a corporate treasurer, as a position trader or a day trader, you need to be immediately understand the fact that the stuff which is happening is fundamental in nature or the stuff which is happening is emotional in nature. Now, if the stuff is in fundamental in nature, then 12 and 26 may not hold true. Take a very simple example. Today, Euro is trading at 1.12. One good news come, it will go to 1.15. One bad news would come, it will go to 1.10 or may go to 1.06 as well, where people speak about that 
it would it would touch the parity on the other hand if it is emotional in nature or oh, sorry the other example of emotional if it is fundamental in nature then you know fine greece would exit we would surely go to 1.06 there is no other opinion fine if fundamentally greece has greece is going to be with us or the other countries are going to be with us in in uh, in in european union then euro would may go to 1.15 level here comes our bot and our sword so we, we have to be very much careful and we have to very well understand the fact that this MACD is not all about 12 minus 26 which is MACD line it is not all about 9 exponential moving average you would reduce 12 minus 26 with 9 if it is greater than 0 you would buy if it is less than 0 you would sell now you need to be very much particular to understand where the things are happening you need to add one more thing which is known as either stop loss or you need to add which is known as trailing stop loss please be note that this so called MACD this RSI these all are oscillators in nature and these oscillators are based upon two important concepts which is either overbought and oversold that a trader is very the trader should very well able to understand now if MACD is positive you would buy it may or might not hold true because you are taking 12 day minus 26 you should not do that at the last I would like to stress the fact that if you are using MACD or RSI you should be very careful how much how what should be appropriate day rather than taking the bookish example of 12 or 26 you may take say 15 or 30 you may take 6 or 10 you should know what should be an appropriate period and that appropriate period should exclude outliers which I earlier talked about trend mean so you should use I agree with the thought that this you know this video talks about MOCD without trend mean but once you really calculate then you should take trend mean you should you should basically exclude trend mean from that my next video will speak about what do you mean by trend mean how can we keep we take this out well again thanks for your time you're welcome to give me a call at 91 which is an Indian code 9899242978 I'm restressing the fact that we uh, we are now turning out to be amongst top 10 YouTube uh, groups in this world and are launching our own online foreign exchange in the treasury course you're welcome to contact me at 919 if you're interested in any online treasury course Thank you.